Hello, everybody. Wow, I missed you so much last week. Hello, everybody. Come on in and get situated. Today, we are going to start quilting this hummingbird quilt. Oh, my glory. Uh, make sure you stay tuned to the end. I'm going to do a slideshow. So, uh, if you didn't see the announcement for the slideshow, you have about 45 minutes to go add your picture. If you want it seen in today's video, how do you add your picture to the slideshow for today? You need to be a member of the creative crew and you'll go over to the creative crew, look in the featured section right on underneath of the banner. You'll see my hummingbird quilt, click on that post and add your photo to the comments. We're going to do a slideshow at the end of show and tell of everybody's progress up until today. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you all so much to my moderators, Sylvia, Dari, Vicky. Thank you all so much. Oh, I don't want to do lives without my moderators. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you so much. Hello, everybody. Um, okay, before we get started, before I switch over, um, oh yeah, I already said that. Stay tuned to the end. I want to do a slideshow. <laughs> Focus, Lisa. It's Friday, y'all. And right before we started, my bird started screaming. I don't know if you could hear him right when we started. And, um, and then I started choking and I was like, no. <laughs> All right, I have a couple things to share with you before we start quilting. Before we start quilting, let me switch this over to my cutting mat. First things first, um, okay, so uh, it's been a little over a week now. I've started a uh, wool applique project with Anitra, and uh, I am loving it so, so much. And it's even gotten me interested and excited about doing some hand stitching on some other projects too, right? So I don't know if you've seen this video. Look, look how cute she is. Y'all, I hand stitched that blanket stitch. I did a whip stitch, a couching stitch, a straight stitch, and a French knot. So if you wanna see how, what I've learned so far and you haven't caught this video, uh, check out my channel. Isn't she just so cute? Uh, the pattern comes with the mug rug mini quilt, right? The two birds like that going in different directions. And then that's the coaster. But look at my hand stitching, y'all. I am quite pleased with myself, if I do say so. Every once in a while, you really have to admire where you are at in your skill sets, no matter what you're doing, right? I think they're adorable. And I think the hand stitching really adds like a quirkiness to it. And I am having so much fun. So if you haven't seen that video and you want to start learning a few hand stitches, you might want to go check it out. Yeah, aren't they so cute, right? I've made like uh, one, two, three of these. <laughs> and uh, only one of the coasters, but I've made three of these so far. All right. And uh, many of you know that, thank y'all so much. Many of y'all know that uh, one evening a month, we're coming live to do a mug rug of the month, and that's a free pattern, y'all. Um, so I just wanted to give you a preview of the one we're doing for May. I have not picked a night yet, but it's called Summer Days. It's a little mug rug, the same size as this sheet of paper, so it's a good size to work with. Uh, so many possibilities, turned edge applique, raw edge applique, um, and I might even do some hand stitching on this one. I'm going to make one of these this afternoon. So, um, if you follow me on Facebook, just keep an eye out because, uh, when I get that preview mug rug finished, I'll post a picture, but keep your eye out for this. This is coming up in May. That's going to be fun. All right. So. The mug rug art quilt oh my goodness so let me just give you a preview of what's coming up on my channel in the next couple of weeks right we're still going to be working on the hummingbird quilt um i have some ideas to do some painting on some of my applique pieces i'll probably be using my derwent ink tense paint pan or my pencils 
But uh, I really love my paint pan. Y'all might have seen me use this before. But I have plans to come back once everything is quilted and maybe do some shadows and some uh, details on my quilt with this. So stay tuned for that. Ooh, Daria said, wait until you see my quilt as you go. Quilt, I'm finishing up today. Oh my goodness. That's exciting. I'll keep an eye out for that. And y'all, while we were uh, camping, we, uh, we had to go to Big Lots for a couple of cat items. <laughs> and uh, right next to Big Lots, there was this really cool store. If you're ever in Williamsburg, you might want to check them out. Uh, it, it was ca It's called Buzz Picasso in Williamsburg, Virginia, uh, right off of Moortown Road. Buzz Picasso. She had all kinds of stuff in there. But uh, I was talking to her, and she used to own a bead shop. And so um, she has lots and lots of her beads from her bead shop in there. And I was like, whoa, this is my lucky day because I want to add some beads to my hummingbird quilt <laughs> So let me just show you some of the things I got. And uh, I plan on making this one of our live videos. I bought some seed beads in different colors that I thought might go with the hummingbird. Or maybe the little, um, what do they call the very center of a flower? <laughs> the little dots. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yes, I don't know if you can really see a lot of the details. But uh, I bought a couple containers of beads. And then she had some mixed beads that are sort of all different colors, but they kind of go together really good, right? So I got those. And then uh, part of the store, they had some jewelry. And uh, I was like, whoa, look at that necklace. Those beads would be gorgeous on my art quilt. <laughs> so I bought the necklace with plans to deconstruct the necklace and use some of the beads. They are gorgeous in person. I don't really know that it shows up so much on the screen. So, um, yes, a beading video after we're done with the quilting. And uh, just to let you know, if, if you want to add some beads to your quilt, some of the stuff that I got to do that, right? I got some Nymo nylon thread in four different colors uh, for beading. And I got some tulip beading needles, size 10 long, 10 short, 11, and 12. Uh, I used one of these needles to sew down a crocheted item on my t-shirt quilt, and I bent it all up. I'm a little bit scared I'm going to bend these all up. <laughs> they're bendy, but um, yeah, they're really super thin, and they should go through the little hole in the beads quite well. So that's the stuff coming up. Okay, let me move all of that right there. So for today's video, we're going to start quilting this quilt. Uh, let me show you some of the stuff I'm going to use while I'm quilting. Okay, uh, the needle, I've, I've done some pre, like just checking my tension and stuff to see if everything works good. I even cleaned out my bobbin area before today's video. Uh, right now, the needle that I have in my machine is the Smith's embroidery needle, and it is the size uh, 9014. That's what I have in there right now, and it seems to be working really good. In my bobbin, I have some superior threads, bottom line. It's a 60 weight thread, and uh, it's the color gray. I use this in my Nolting long arm, and it works super great. And uh, so that's what I have in my bobbin area. Some of the colors that we're going to use uh, in my quilt. Y'all, this is uh, Harlan a couple years ago bought me, I think it came like 60 different colors. I think it was Brother Embroidery Thread. Um. I know that he bought it on Amazon. And uh, this is the thread that I'm going to start quilting with. It's an embroidery thread, right? Um, it's a 40 weight, and it's got a shine to it. 
and I uh, have all of these colors. Now this thread doesn't so much work fantastically in my embroidery machine, but it seems to work okay in my Juki. So we're gonna give these threads a try. And then uh, I have a machine quilt and glove that just gives me a little bit of traction moving the quilt around and I've already layered my quilt, okay? So let's talk about that for a second. In the middle, I have some very thin, warm and natural cotton batting. <clears throat> and then I have my backing fabric, I believe courtesy of Jeannie. I believe Jeannie sent me that fabric a little while ago. So thank you, Jeannie. And um, I have glue basted all of my layers with an Elmer's glue stick. So we're ready to start quilting. Now, um, just a little disclaimer before we start. I used to like to try to go live on Facebook and do quilting, and it always seemed like something messed up. It always did. Uh, it seems like if I'm not live and I'm just here in my studio and I'm quilting, everything runs smoothly. As soon as I turn on a camera and go live, it seems like something messes up. So I've taken some steps to try to see if anything was going to mess up, right? I've cleaned out my bobbin, got a new needle. I checked the tension on my thread, but I'm hoping everything runs smooth today. But y'all be patient with me just in case, okay? Just in case. Y'all, I don't know about you, but it's chilly here. I am cold today. All right, and I'm also hoping that um, I've set the camera up so that you can see what I'm doing really well. And um, if you wanna stick around while I just do some quilting, that would be awesome. Um, and I, I figure we're gonna be here about an hour. So it's 12, 12, and I wanna do the slideshow. So we're going to quilt on this for about 30 minutes together and you can get some ideas on quilting some of these background pieces. I think those are the colors I picked out for today. And uh, yeah, let's just have some fun. If this is boring for you, which I imagine to many of you it is, um, come back in about 30 minutes and check out everybody else's quilt, okay? Or if you're watching on the replay, just fast forward. <laughs> That's the beauty of the replay. Let me switch this camera over. And I'm also hoping that all my cameras um, play nicely together. I've got four cameras running today. And sometimes that just seems like too much for um, my, my laptop. So hopefully they all cooperate. All right, so we're going to come over, uh, and I usually like starting towards the middle of my quilt. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of my chalk lines have started disappearing on the older sections we did first, and then you'll see a lot of my chalk lines, this was the last week we did, those sort of show up a lot more, but... Um, I didn't want to try to get rid of those lines until everything's quilted down. So just showing you off to the side, this will end up getting cut off. I have tested my tension just to see how it was going to work. And I did come over here and I quilted this little section right here. Now I think that the colors I'm using, depending on which piece I'm quilting, the thread might blend in while I'm quilting and you might not see so much detail, but when you move it away, you might start to see it. Okay. So let's see if I can roll this up just a little bit just to fit her in the machine. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to come towards the center of the quilt a little bit and start there. So, um, and y'all can even see, I did not fill this in. I had a little bit of an idea of um, adding like a dragonfly bead or something and doing some hand stitches like a little tail there. So I didn't fill that in. 
All right, so we're gonna get started. We're gonna go down. I'm gonna pull up that bobbin thread. And it's super thin, <laughs> super thin. And I'm gonna lower that needle right back down. I need to move my chair a little bit, I think, to be more comfortable. There we go, okay. All right, just letting y'all know. Uh, I won't be able to see your comments because the phone's over there. So let me just check before I get started. Donna said, how do I take this design and print it on white fabric to use ink tense pencils? Uh, the way that this quilt is designed, you could certainly do it. Okay, go, you'll want to go back to, um, like the first painting on fabric quilt along we did, it looks like a stained glass. In those first videos, I walked through how to print that design out. And I think that there's a specific video on that in that playlist. So check that out. Probably the easiest way to do it, Donna, is to print out on paper all of your designs, tape those papers together, and then trace your design on the white one solid big piece of fabric. That would be the easiest way if you want to use your ink tints. And uh, that would be a lot more foolproof than trying to print everything on fabric and sew it together. All right. Okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna start quilting, y'all. Uh, let's lower this. Just to let you know, uh, I do have my free motion foot on and I've lowered my feed dogs. Although if your machine doesn't do that or doesn't have that option, uh, you could still do this. Uh, I quilted some of those little bird mug rugs and I left my feed dogs up. And so it worked just fine. I have my straight stitch selected and I've lowered it all the way down to a zero. So the needle is just going up and down, right? And I'm moving the quilt. I'm just going to take a couple tiny, tiny little lock stitches and we're going to start quilting. And I don't have a plan, so I'm just quilting willy nilly, y'all. <laughs> Some of these pieces, I just want to quilt around the edge and let them puff up and stand apart from the neighboring pieces. Some of them, I want to quilt the whole entire piece with just some kind of filler quilting. So I'm just gonna have fun with it. Now this embroidery needle is a little bit of a bigger needle. So I'm trying to stay away from the edge of the applique because that bigger needle, if I stitch on that edge, it tends to fray the fabric. Uh, but I'm having really good success and tension with the bigger needle. So I'm going to use it. I'm just going to keep that in mind that if I hit the edge, it might fray that edge a little bit. I'm going to be doing lots of turning and shifting as we're quilting around. Now, I know many of you uh, are extremely new, so uh, you might be wondering, because I've stayed away from the edge that far, will the edges fray if you wash this project? And the answer is yes. 
the heat and bond light on the back of this piece will help it not to fray as much, but it's possible that the edges will fray, right? Uh, being an art quilt, I don't forever see myself washing this anyway, so the edges should stay nice and clean. Washing it, it might fray a little bit. So that piece, I kind of want to stay uh, puffy. So let's skip over and let's do this piece next to it. So you see, I just did some back and line, back and forth lines. Uh, nothing strategic, just back and forth, just to get it quilted down. This piece is awful tiny. Let's use the same color thread on that. And for this piece, I'm just gonna go from like corner to corner just to stitch it down. I did use heat and bond light. It's not permanent forever. The pieces have to be stitched down some way, but I don't necessarily need to stitch down all the edges. All right, so let's pull that away. So you'll see this big needle really wants to grab those edges. See that? I might have to see about getting some smaller embroidery needles and seeing if I can't use those, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna use these for now. I'm gonna skip right over and we're gonna do this piece here. You'll see when I start and stop, I just take really, really tiny stitches just to lock it in place. I don't want to use the same color thread throughout, so let's do a big jump. And let's come right up here around this flower. I want to switch colors of thread and have bunches of colors of thread going on. So there's that piece. Let's skip down. Let's rotate this a little bit. And let's come down here and do this piece. I have too many gorgeous colors to just use the same color on this, I think.
think my camera is glitching. No. I think this one will just do an echo all the way right into the center of it. And we'll leave the center of that a little poofed up, right? So I'll just lock the thread. And we'll do one more piece with this color. And I choose you, Pikachu, right there. <laughs> and this one, I'm just going to do a little uh, meandering. Or no, this has got a lot of... Uh, little details in this fabric. So let's have fun with that. And I missed a spot right down there, so let's just <laughs> travel right back down there. So that's a really fun idea if you have really uh, cool designs in your fabric you could quilt around the designs that adds a really neat texture to it I know you can't feel that and you might not even be able to see it in this light but it adds a really cool texture to that piece so let me just uh, switch this top color I'll bring in a lighter color because you might be able to see that better. Susan is asking if you could talk about using tool on this project. Yes, Miss Susan. Actually, what you might want to do is go back to uh, the video right before this one in the series. It wasn't last week because we weren't live last week. Uh, so it's like video nine in the series. Uh, because I showed examples of tool and what it would look like on top of your project. I showed several different tools layered over top, and we talked a lot about it in the last video. So you might want to go check that out. Let's use this light blue. All right, let's get this thread off of there. And I am sorry, because when I'm over here, I can't see any of the comments. And if you have questions, I'm missing them. 
I'll try to come back though and scroll and do a quick scroll through. Thank you, Dari, for repeating that question. It was right at the bottom, I could see it. But when I'm over here, I miss everything. All right, we're gonna put some like baby blue thread in there and we'll do some pieces with that. You might actually be able to see it better than the darker color I was using. We're gonna quilt a few pieces with this thread before we switch over and I get to show you everybody else's hummingbird quilts. All right, do I have all the steps threaded? I think so, okay. All right, let me put this little glove back on because it really helps. Okay, so of course the quilt's gonna draw up some because I've jumped from place to place. So we're gonna work with that. <laughs> I'll just cut some of these jumps. So it doesn't do that so much. There, that's a little bit flatter. All right, where do we wanna go with this light? Let's do this one with a light thread so it really pops. My allergies are killing me. The other day, who was I? Oh, I went to church. <laughs> and my eyes on the way there just started pouring. It looked like I was crying. People probably thought I was crying all day. <laughs> it just would not stop. I had to go take something just so my eyes would stop watering and people wouldn't think like, like I was super upset about something. Okay, so we have some baby blue thread in there. Let's lock that into place. And I'll cut those little tail pieces. It did, I looked like I was crying all day. <laughs> I will tell you, if you wanna get into free motion quilting, this is probably a really good size uh, project to work on. 20 by 20. You do deal with a little bit of folding in the throat space, but it's not huge, right? I do a lot of turning only because I know my machine really uh, doesn't so much love to go sideways. <laughs> All right, so that is stitched around the edges, but it's also right next to the piece that we did at the very start that I wanted it to be poofy. So let's really quilt this piece a lot. I'm gonna try to go sideways. She did it.
All right, we just did lines all the way down to the center. That should help this piece seem puffed up compared to that piece. Let's scoot right on up here. I think I want to do a little meandering stitch. Let's cut this thread out of the way. All right, we're going to do a little tiny meandering stitch. This stitch is so small and you're not going to be able to see it till I move this away. But it's so small that if you cross your lines, you don't really see it. <laughs> pull that away so that maybe you can see that with the shadow a little bit because that thread really plays well with the fabric and uh, you don't so much see it on the camera. How are we doing on time? I want to do maybe two more pieces with you. Let's jump down. I really want you to be able to see it. So let's do this dark piece that runs in between those flower petals and this thread should really pop on that fabric All right, we're just going to do lines just like that all the way back and forth. There, three little lines. It's got, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> three little lines. There we go. Uh, and it really adds a little bit of brightness to that piece too, especially in person. So let's do one more piece together. And we will move. Let me cut some of these jump stitches out of the way. Let's see, where do we want to go? Let's go right here. For this one, I think I'm just going to do some lines back and forth all the way up. Because this is a wider needle, when I'm traveling along the edge, I'm actually traveling in the black part of the fabric, so I don't tear up that edge of that fabric so much.
All right, we're going to lock that thread. We're going to pull this away, and I'm going to show you what we've done so far over on the other table. Because the lighting is different, you might see it differently over there. But we quilted several pieces of this quilt. I have lots of jump stitches to trim, and let me move my stool over. <laughs> there we go. And we'll come back here. Let me take this glove off and move all these threads out of the way. I'm going to tell you, my machine actually did pretty good today moving sideways. I think sometimes the stronger threads, this is a really strong thread, even though it's super duper thin, it's made to go really fast and long arms. I think this made a lot of difference. And uh, so, yeah, if you have issues with thread breaking, you might want to try a different thread, a stronger thread. Lisa said, is your machine tying off the threads on one section to the next? Lisa, when I move, I don't know if you saw it, but I did tiny, tiny, tiny little stitches. It almost looked like I didn't move at all, but I did just a smidgen. And that is tying a knot. I don't like to use my thread cutter because on finished projects that has the backing on it because my thread cutter leaves a little knot on the back and I personally don't want to see that. So I just do a couple little tiny, tiny smidgen like micro stitches to lock it before I jump from place to place. Let me just cut some of these jump stitches. And I will tell you, have you ever tried to pick out quilting that the stitches are really close to? <laughs> these stitches are not going anywhere on their own. I will tell you that. This project will fray if you wash it. That's the nature of doing the raw edge applique and doing a straight stitch quilting like this where the edges are not completely covered. Um, let me cut these jump stitches on the back. See that bottom line just blends right in. See that? You can see the texture of the quilting, but you don't really see that thread. Uh, if you don't want it to fray, you need to use a stitch like a zigzag stitch or a satin stitch. Being that this is an R quilt though, I probably will never wash this. So I'm not worried about the edges fraying on their own. The thread blends in so, so good. It's actually hard to see all the little jump stitches. There we go. I think that's all of them. So let me just show you the texture on the back where we are now. The stripes are gonna play havoc with the camera. <laughs> and then from the front. So uh, that thread, we quilted this piece uh, just around the edges, but the thread really blends in with that fabric and it almost disappears, right? But then that same thread we used right next to it, and uh, you can kind of see it. See that? And then we moved up here, and we did this piece. Um, with the baby blue thread, we quilted this piece. Let me see if I can show you that. See that? That was the little meandering stitch. And of course it really shows up on this piece. And down here, see that? This piece we did with the darker thread. So in person I see it, but the camera really doesn't pick up a lot of that. And then of course we came right through here with the lighter thread and just did three little simple lines quilting down that piece. So that's my plan. I do think, uh, because we would be here till next year if I just quilted a few pieces at a time in the background area. 
I think what I would like to do is uh, between now and next Friday, go through and quilt the background areas with you. And when we come back next week, we'll quilt the flowers and um, possibly the hummingbird. Let's try to knock that all out so that we can move on to painting and beading, right? But I do want to want you to see me quilting the flowers and the hummingbird. I really do. Donna said, does anyone know if you wash the fabric first before using intense pencils? I think you get uh, different results if you wash the fabric first, right? And all the fabrics are so different. Most of the time, I don't pre-wash my fabrics, y'all. <laughs> uh, but it does play a role if you want your project to be washed. It's probably better if you do pre-wash first. Terry said, if you put tool down and free motion quilt like you are doing today, will that wreck the tool? Nope. Absolutely not. You can quilt right over top of it. Yes, you can. One of the show and tells today, was it Pat's quilt? She layered with tool and she did the cross hatching. It's gorgeous. I'm going to show you that here in a second. Mary, Mary Jo said, I'm thinking of using wool batting on top of the warm and natural. Do you think that would puff it up too much? Mary Jo, I think that would add some gorgeous texture to your quilting. I really do. Here's my suggestion. With your quilting, start in the middle if you do that. Because when you quilt that two layers of batting, I think it's going to have a tendency to draw it up a little bit. Maybe not a lot, but if you start in the middle and work your way out to the sides, I think you'll have a much easier time. How do you anchor the tool? I would cut your tool bigger than your project, right? My background is bigger than what we're going to end up with. This quilt's going to be 20 by 20, so I'm going to be cutting some of this black border off once it's all quilted. That's just extra until it's all quilted, right? I would get a piece of tool that's bigger than 20 by 20, and I would safety pin the tool all the way around just to secure it in place as you're quilting, right? And as you've quilted a section, you can start removing the pins. And uh, that's how I put my tool over top until it's quilted. Hatching, cross hatching. Donna, I hope so. I hope you give it a try. Uh, this project, um, wow, I think, it, okay, so I always say whenever I start something new, I don't usually start at beginner level. At a fault, that's one of my things that I just, this is, uh, that's a lot of quilting to learn with free motion quilting. Try a couple of little mug rugs first, right? To get some practice and feel how it moves around. But uh, yeah, you could just jump right in too with this project. If, you, if you're like me, <laughs> you could do that. All right, y'all. I hope that that was a good example of some of the quilting I'm going to do. Simple little tiny, tiny meandering. Straight lines back and forth, back and forth some echoing all the way to the center, some wider lines back and forth, back and forth. Um, I'm not on every piece running around the edge of the piece, and uh, some of them I am. Some of them I'm only going to go around the edge and leave the rest unquilted. So there's some ideas for quilting the background pieces. Next week we'll come back and we'll quilt the flowers and the hummingbird. Does that sound like fun? That's our plan. So let's move over and let me focus on your quilts.
because I've been excited about this for a week now. <laughs> All right, so let me switch my screen. Hopefully it's still working. Yes, okay, let me give it a second. It's gonna look crazy for a minute. I think I always say that. <laughs> oh, there we go. We're gonna head on over to Facebook, y'all. And we're gonna go to the creative crew. If you are uh, just watching one of my videos for the first time and you're on Facebook and haven't joined the creative crew, oh, you ought to come join us over here. We have a lot of fun. Vicky's been doing Zooms the last few days, finishing up her uh, hummingbird quilt, which is beautiful. You're going to see it here in a second. So you can hang out, keep your eye out for Zooms and hang out with us. Okay. We're scrolling down to the featured section right underneath the banner. See that here's the featured section and here was my invitation to share your quilt. So I'm going to click on that. Oh, we have three new member requests today. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, there's my invitation and we're going to go to the very first comment. And we're going to scroll through so you can see everybody's uh, quilts. So um, here's our first one. I know I'm going to, I am so sorry. I'm going to say your name wrong. Nydia? Nydia? Help me say your name right. Here is Nydia's quilt. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh yeah, Vicki said she did three days of Zoom so she could catch up. Yes, we've already talked about the settings for the machine, so you'll have to come back on the replay. I think this is your quilt. It is. It's gorgeous. Look at there. Look at there. Oh, she's already done some quilting, it looks like. She has. Here's the cool thing, y'all. Same quilt pattern, different colors, patterns, and fabrics make a huge world of difference. So even though we've used the same pattern, each one of our quilts looks so, so unique. And I really love that. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I'm going to tell you, I am super crazy about the fabric you used for the wings of the hummingbird. That is fantastic. Good job. I hope you are so happy with this. Isn't that pretty? And then uh, we have Miss Ella's. And so look at what Miss Ella did with hers. She added a little border, which I think frames this quilt beautifully. If I had space, a good amount of space around a couple of my sides, I don't. <laughs> I would love to add something like this. That is so creative. So Ella's, Ella added the tool over top of hers. Didn't you, Ella? I think you did. And uh, she's done some cross hatching. So I don't know if you can see it. It really blends in, which I love, uh, but it adds this gorgeous texture. And I think she has a picture coming up next that shows the back of her quilt. And you can really see the texture on the back. Yeah, look at how she just added that little border right around her quilt. That is awesome. Yes, I love those colors. Yes, okay, so here's the back of Ella's quilt. And so she did the cross hatching. See, I'm a super huge fan of cross hatching. So if the thought of doing the free motion quilting, you're like, no way, Jose, I'm not there yet. Look how gorgeous that is. Isn't that pretty? <clears throat> and it's purple. <laughs> I love it. Good job, Ella. So you're all done with yours. It's quilted. She's even got the binding on it already. So she is all done. 
Philomena. Okay, so she has a couple pictures. All right, so she's done a couple different versions, y'all. I thought I was busy. <laughs> All right, let's check out her first one. Check out that fabric for the hummingbird. Isn't that awesome? Very artistic. I love it. I really love the orange and yellow flower on this one. It just really pops out. And I love that you sort of fussy cut the bird's chin or the throat area with the paisley. That's genius. Aw, my father did stained glass windows, so this project is super special to me. Aw, I'm so glad. <clears throat> That's gorgeous. Let's check out her second version. All right, so that was her fabric version, and she did a painted version. I thought I was busy. Check out her painted version. Metallic painting. I would love to know more. Which metallic paints did you use? Because that is so, so pretty. Look at the difference just between the fabric version and the painted version. I really want to do a painted version. I don't have time to do a painted version, but I really want to. Look at that. That is so, so pretty. See, with the paints, you can really go in and do some details in the birds. Yes, that is gorgeous. That is so pretty. All right, we're coming down to Valerie's. Look at there, look at there. It looks like Valerie's doing some straight line. Looks like she's doing some cross hatching too. I see cross hatching in there, Valerie. Look at you go. Now, okay, so on this one, I want to tell you what stands out to me is the fabric that she used for the center of her yellow and pink and orange flowers. Isn't that genius? That is so smart. That is really pretty. And I really like how you use two different colors of green for your leaves. That really adds a lot to it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Good job. Oh, Miss Valerie, you're here. Yes, she did uh, cross hatching. Gorgeous. I hope you had so much fun. So it looks like you're all done. Very nice. I love it. All right, here's Miss Judy. Judy did metallic painting on the bird and she used tool all over. So here is a, a really good example, too, of the tool and quilting. Okay, so you've seen uh, two versions with tool and cross hatching. Here's a version of tool and going around and quilting around your pieces. Metallic paint on the bird and tool all over. So she used metallic paint. Ooh, see it? The very top of the bird's head is sort of shiny. That's genius. Very nice. I love it. So, Judy, what did you think about using the tool? I love using tool. I'm going to just tell you. Look at the details in the wings that she cut in there. Very nice. Yes, very beautiful. Nice job, Judy. It looks like she's got her binding done, so she's all done too. Y'all are ahead of me. Uh, Kathy Parnell Vance. Look at what you did. Lumineer paint instead of applique, quilted with black glide 40 weight thread. Look at there. Look at there. Isn't that so pretty? The Lumineer paints, well, the name Lumineer speaks for itself. It's got a nice sheen and shine to it. 
Very pretty. Wow. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at all of the detail and the quilting she did. She's got a binding on hers too. She's all done. So she quilted with Black Glide 40 weight. I have some of that. I might use some of that. Very nice. I'm going to tell you the dark centers of your flowers really, um, to me, they kind of make this piece. Isn't it funny from quilt to quilt, the differences? I mean, they're all gorgeous, but what sticks out on each one of them to me? That is awesome. Good job, Kathy. You're all done. Uh, Terry said, mine didn't turn out very good, but I sure love your show and will continue to watch. Terry, just take a break from it and come back to it in a week or two. You'll be surprised at what stepping away from a project will do. When you come back with fresh eyes, it'll look totally different. Don't trash the project. Just take a break. All right, Miss Pauline has a couple different versions too. So let's check out her first version. This one looks painted to me. This looks painted. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to tell you I love the colors of the background on this one. Very, very stained glass look to it. And the lighter colors in the background really help add some depth because the fabric, the flowers in the hummingbird seem to be sticking up off of it. Very nice. So let's check out Pauline's second one. This looks like her fabric version. Wow. So she used the blues and the teals in the background like mine. Look at the top fabric, the very, very top left corner. Isn't that a cool piece of fabric right there? It kind of looks like, um, like it was washed with a stencil. <laughs> Do y'all see the butterfly in her quilt? I'm going to give you a second to see it. That's cute. I like that idea. This quilt has a lot of pieces, doesn't it? <laughs> it certainly does. So it looks like you have not started quilting yet. I'm wondering which direction you plan on going with yours. Y'all see the butterfly? I'm going to leave it as a, a hide and seek. If you don't see it, you'll have to scroll through the post and pull up the picture. Very nice, Pauline. You've been super busy, too. Two quilts. Angela said, everyone's quilts are gorgeous. I can hardly wait to start mine. I hope you share pictures when you do, Angela. Karen said, hers is not quilted yet. But there is her top. Look at that. I kind of really love the background because it looks like denim. And I love denim. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, the butterfly was down towards the bottom. Karen, how do you plan on quilting your quilt? What do you plan on doing with the quilting to get it finished up? It's very pretty. Look, you even did all the different colors on the tail part of the hummingbird. Good job. Please keep sharing pictures if you haven't quilted it yet. Uh, we would love to see pictures as you finish it up. Here's Miss Sylvia. F Sylvia said, not great at quilting it, but it will hang on my door. Look, there we go. It looks like Sylvia, you used the tool, right? 
Now, Sylvia, she says, not great at quilting. I just want to let you know that it is great quilting. It is great quilting. I see lots of texture in that, and I think the quilting not only serves the purpose of securing all the pieces of your quilt together and binding it together, but it adds some really great texture to your quilt. Yes, look at the purple fabrics she used for the wings of her hummingbird. And do you see the bees on her quilt? These bees stick out a little bit more than the butterfly did on the other one. That's more like a hidden gem on that one. Do you see the bees on this? Ah, oh, Sylvia's gone. Okay. All right, Miss Sylvia. You did a good job. I love it. It looks like you're finished, too. It looks like you got the edges done. I hope you had so much fun. All right, here's Miss Pat. Isn't that bright and beautiful? Look at the fabric that she used for her hummingbird. Look at that paisleys with the pops of purple. And the purple flower down at the bottom. All right, Miss Pat, how do you plan on finishing yours? Are you going to go with the tool? Or are you going to do something different? That green is really bright and brilliant on this quilt, isn't it? And I'm going to tell you, I really like how this one, uh, see that top orangish flower? She used the pattern fabric. And then when the petals bend over, she used more of a, it doesn't look like a solid, but a different fabric for the underside of the petals. Isn't that pretty? Yes. Very smart. Gorgeous. Oh, Ella said she's going to do some matchstick quilting. Or she was going to do some matchstick quilting. Yeah, Mary Jo said the background and solid gives it a great look. Yes. Same pattern everybody's used, and every one of them looks so unique, don't they? Very cool. Yeah, Jane said everyone's quilt is beautiful. Constance said, uh, looking forward to seeing them all. Kathy said, uh, they are all beautiful. I love seeing all the diversity and different personalities in them. Yes. All right, Miss Tammy, here is yours, Tammy. Look at there. Wow. Okay, so I love the plaids in the blue fabric in the background. She used some striped fabrics in the centers of her flowers. Miss Tammy, how do you plan on finishing your quilt? Because I see you are exactly where I am. Are you going to cover it with tulle or are you going to do uh, quilting in a different way? Wow, I kind of like the purple flower down at the bottom too. It's got lots of different colored petals. So does the yellow flower. That's a good idea. I'm going to tell you, if you've been on the fence about starting this quilt, watching this slideshow is probably really good because lots of really good ideas. Yeah, the orange flower on top. Isn't that pretty? Good job, Tammy. I hope you share more pictures as you finish it up. Janita said, I will share uh, once I start on the other side. I think she does have a picture down further. Jackie's picture, look at that. The orange flowers and the red flowers really pop. And then that one single yellow flower is like, hello, I'm here. Isn't that pretty? She used uh, several different fabrics for her hummingbird. I like that. The chest of the hummingbird really pops on this one, doesn't it? 
I don't know about you on your screen, but to me, it just looks like very dimensional. That was smart. I see uh, a couple of quilting lines. Have you started quilting this? It might just be my eyes, but in the hummingbird's tail, I see some lines. She, Jackie said, deciding how I want to finish it. Very nice, Jackie. Good job. That's gorgeous. It's so bright. If you don't have a window in a room, this would be gorgeous. It just kind of looks like there's light coming through there. Next up, we have Nancy. Nancy has a border around hers. Look at that. Nancy said, getting ready to mount this on stretch canvas. Well, isn't that smart? That's so smart. If you don't want to quilt it, just mount it on canvas. There you go. Look at her hummingbird, y'all. Isn't that pretty? Looks like some batik fabrics. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm. I like the addition of the border around it. I really do. It really frames it in, doesn't it? Good job, Nancy. That's so pretty. She's used all the same fabric for the background as well. See that? That's awesome. Elena's picture is up next. Elena also used all the same fabric for the background. I kind of really like that. I really do. Ooh, do y'all see the little butterfly in her quilt? I like the butterfly idea. I was thinking about putting a dragonfly on mine, but I really like the butterfly idea. That was smart. I'm gonna tell you my favorite fly, even though I'm partial to purple. Do y'all see the little uh, ladybug on the purple? Um, even though I love the purples, my favorite color, my favorite flowers on this quilt are the pink ones uh, because of the fabric she used. That is really cool. Yeah, the little ladybug. That was smart. Good job, Elena. Maria's up next, and look at what Maria did. She embroidered the hummingbird quilt. I am not sure if she has uh, digitizing software, how she went about doing it, but isn't that cool? That is really cool. I am wondering, because I can't tell from the photo how big this is. Like what size hoop do you have, Maria? And uh, how big is this? Because wouldn't that be pretty on a shirt? Yeah. Very pretty. I have Embrilliance software, and when I think about digitizing this pattern, I'm like, oh, that is a lot of work. I'm wondering how much work it was to get it to this point. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I would love to know a lot more about it. Next up, we have Miss Jerry. Look at there. Ooh, okay, so what sticks out to me is the gorgeous fabric in the background right in the center. I don't know what that is, but it's gorgeous. And then look how she used different fabrics for the different parts of her bird. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. I really love it. I'm going to tell you, if you've been looking for ideas for colors, fabrics to use, uh, 
this slideshow is great examples of this quilt. Very pretty, Jerry. Trinita says, here is my hummingbird. Uh, I might redo this one because my hummingbird doesn't look right, but I haven't decided. But it was fun to make, and I want to make another, but use she used fabric markers. Okay, so it looks like Trinita taped the whole pattern together and then traced the design on the fabric, and she's used fabric markers up until this point. Trinita, I say keep going. Just keep on going and keep working with it. That's a lot of work up until this point to just ditch it and start over. I say keep on going. Keep on going and please share your progress with us as you go along. That's a lot of work tracing and all that stuff to just start all over again. I'd keep going with it. Oh, here's Vicky's quilt. See, I stayed away from the slideshow, so uh, <laughs> I did see your TikTok, but I stayed away from the slideshow. Look at the purple Vicky used on her hummingbird. Eee. Isn't that so pretty? Yes, you really knocked this out in the last couple of days. You really did. Y'all see the butterflies throughout the background of her quilt? So, Miss Vicky, how do you plan on finishing your quilt? What is your plan? Are you going to use the tool or are you going to do something different? Aren't the colors really bright and vibrant? This one also looks like it's a window, like light is coming through. Very pretty. I'm going to tell you, is this our first white flower? She's got a white flower down here at the bottom with the black center, and I kind of really dig it. I think that's our first white flower. Vicki, you really jammed out some sessions and knocked this out, didn't you? <laughs> it's a lot of work, but you did a, a really good job. Oh, here we go. I did cross hatching. Oh, you posted another picture. Nidia. I'm probably still going to say that wrong. Nidia. Cross hatching. Whoa. You can really see the cross hatching here. I'm glad you posted another picture. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? Uh, Vicky said she's going to use tool and uh, stitch to define the bird and the flowers. Ooh, I can't wait to see that, Vicky. Isn't that so pretty? The cross hatching is one of my favorites. If I didn't have uh, a plan for quilting mine, I would certainly go with the cross hatching. I love it. Oh, she's got white flowers too. Okay, so there are more white flowers. Very pretty. I kind of like it sitting in that chair like that. <laughs> what do y'all think? Okay, so that was the last picture. That in the chair, I would probably leave that quilt there. That's so pretty like that. All right, everybody, uh, I think I will leave this post up so that you can go and check out all of these quilts in more detail. You know, if you, um, if you go to the Facebook post and you open the picture on your screen, you can see a lot more detail than what you can see here in the slideshow, but y'all have done so good. I am so dang proud of y'all. I'm going to tell you what. I really am. And look at all the inspiration and ideas. So if you shared your project with us today, I just want to say thank you. I know sometimes it takes a lot of guts.
to put yourself out there. And I just want to thank y'all for inspiring others with this project. I love seeing all of them. Every single one of them is so unique. Uh, thank you, Miss Ella. So um, as we close out today, are there questions that I missed? I'm sure there are. I have a few minutes before I go. So uh, if you have questions, we can hang out for a minute. And uh, yeah. I think uh, this afternoon I'm going to work on the mug rug of the month for May. So I have an example to show y'all. Keep an eye out for that. Oh, Stacy said I just posted mine. All right, hold on a second, Miss Stacy. Let's go back. Let's go back for a second. Let's refresh the screen. Whoa, 11 new member requests. Well, y'all are joining up, joining up. Uh, just to let you know, all the 11 people waiting to get clicked in, uh, we have a moderator, Miss Maureen, and uh, there's two security questions. If you didn't answer those two questions, go back and do that so we can make sure to click you in, okay? Let me go down and see if we can see Stacy's picture. There it is, Stacy. Hold on a second. I'm glad you got it in there. Look at Stacy's. Stacy, you did so good. She said not quilted yet, and she's thinking about using tulle. I would do it, Stacy. If you've never used tulle before, okay, so uh, check out the last video in this series. It's like video number nine. There's a link to the playlist in the description box and just scroll down to the last video before this one. And then uh, check out a couple other videos I know I've posted here on my channel, but there's other ones on YouTube too. I did a hexagon table runner with flowers and I used tool and I showed uh, a really good example how to use it. And then um, I did a little mosaic angel mug rug using tool. So check out that video too if you have more questions. I say go for, go for it, use the tool. It's gorgeous. Good job, Stacy. I like the lighter aqua, I say aqua or teal uh, colors of the hummingbird. And then the red chin really pops, right? That's smart. Terry said, I just posted mine. Let's go and see if we can see Terry's. Philip said, there's a lot of talented people, here. right? Yes, I agree. Let me refresh and see if we can see Terry's picture. Scrolling. Oh, there we go. I scrolled right past it. Terry, I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. Terry said, not quilted yet. Wow. Ooh, look at the swirly fabric for the hummingbird. And you know what? I kind of love that all your background is the same and all your flowers are yellow with orange centers. How cool is that? So Terry, what are your plans for the quilting? What are you thinking about doing? Her background fabric has clouds in it. Do y'all see that? I like that fabric. I like the cloud fabric. Yeah, gorgeous. I'm wondering, Miss Terry, how you plan on quilting that. It's fabulous. I think that's all of them. Yep, okay, Terry and Stacy. Yep, okay. I think we've got everybody now. <laughs> All right. 
wrong one, Lisa. There we go. <laughs> yes, y'all did so good. Oh, thank you, Celeste. Uh, stitch length setting for free motion quilting. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you use a stitch length as that is determined by how you move the fabric. That's right. Yes. When you're doing the free motion quilting, I set my machine on a straight stitch and I set my stitch length to a zero. And uh, the stitch length is really determined by how fast you're pushing on the foot pedal, right? Or how hard you're pushing on it, how fast your needle is going, and then also how fast you're moving that quilt around. You could um, make really long stitches and really, really tight, tiny, tiny micro stitches too. It's all determined by how fast your needle is going and how fast you're moving the quilt. Oh, Terry said uh, with her quilt, she auditioned some navy tool, so she thinks she's going to use that. Ooh, I hope you post pictures when you're done and highlight with glide thread on the flowers. Yes, <laughs> that would be pretty. So keep us updated on that. That is awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing your pictures with everybody. That is awesome. So what are your plans for the weekend? Uh, I don't know if y'all can see right in the hoop right there. There's my project I'm working on with Anitra. I'm still on my first little section of that project, but I'm getting close to being done with that section. <laughs> so I'm going to work on that this weekend. I'm going to make the little flower mug rug, and uh, I might quilt on some of these background pieces. Pat said, what is glide thread? Uh, let me show you. Do I have some? I get mine on big, big cones, but you can get it on smaller cones. Let me go grab some. I get mine on big cones, uh, Pat, because I like using it in my, um, on my long arm. But, uh, let's see, what weight is this? Does it say, I think it's a 40 weight. It is a polyester thread and it kind of has a little bit of a sheen to it. See that? And, uh. My Nolting really likes quilting with it. You can get it on smaller spools if you want. Um, but yeah, this is the Glide. It has that sheen to it. Superior Threads, I think, is where you can get it. I think that's where I order it from. I could be wrong. Glide Thread is my new favorite. I like using it, too. All right, Miss Dari, you're getting ready to go. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for um, moderating. Okay, everybody. I think we're leaving without any open questions. I hope so. <laughs> but if you're watching on the replay and you have more questions, feel free to jump down to the comments section. Uh, this is where we are, y'all. And uh, to be really honest, I do my best quilt. I say my best, <laughs> whatever that means. I enjoy my quilting when I have music going on in the background. So I do look forward to knocking out Quite a bit of the background uh, quilting before next week with some music. Hopefully it warms up a little bit. I can open a window. That would be awesome. 
And I'm not sure if we're still live because, uh, oh, there we go. It just froze for a minute. <laughs> so yeah, enjoy your week and uh, yeah, keep posting your pictures. Even, <clears throat> even if you have questions and you're not sure what to do, post a picture about it. It's a lot easier to answer questions about your project if you post a picture. And it looks like we have 12 members waiting to be joined in. So uh, welcome to the creative crew. <laughs> <clears throat> have a fantastic weekend, everybody. See you next Friday. Next Friday, we're quilting flowers and hummingbird. Okay, I'll see you then. All of my buttons are everywhere. <laughs> the slideshow really messed up my screen. Okay, here we go. I found it. Yay. Have a great weekend.